Hello, and welcome to the Dr. Rebecca Baxt podcast. I'm Dr. Rebecca Baxt, board-certified dermatologist, and I'm here to discuss with you all issues relating to the skin that you're in. In this podcast, we will tackle the topic of the day quickly to get you the take-home points that you need. After listening to an episode, you should be educated about the topic and able to fix the issue yourself or well-prepared to ask the right questions at your next dermatology appointment. Let's get started. Today, we're going to talk about warts and how to treat them. Warts are caused by human papillomavirus, otherwise known as HPV. HPV has different strains. Most are benign, although they're always very annoying as they cause warts on the hands and the feet or anywhere on the body and people hate warts and want to get rid of them. But generally speaking, warts can occur anywhere on the body and are benign. Warts are generally bumpy and crusty and sometimes they can bleed as blood vessels grow up into them to feed the virus that is growing on the skin. They are typically unsightly and annoying, and people want them gone. Sometimes warts on the face or the genital region are not as bumpy. They can be much more smooth. On the face, sometimes we call them flat warts, and they can be harder to diagnose. But warts in all cases are treatable, no matter where they are on the body. When a patient comes in and we're trying to determine whether or not they have a wart or many warts, The diagnosis is often made just by physical examination because warts have a particular look to them, and most dermatologists can tell right away. However, sometimes it's confusing as warts can also look like other things, and it does require a skin biopsy, which is just a small procedure where we clean and numb the skin and cut off a little piece to determine what it is. Warts, as I mentioned, are caused by a virus, and they are contagious, and they are spread from person to person or people pick them up in the environment. For example, a lot of times I find that people who are prone to warts and go barefoot a lot at a pool, the gym, the dance studio, et cetera, they will pick them up there if you're prone to them. Some people will never ever get a wart and that is great and some people get them on and off all the time. This is likely genetically based and we really do not know the details of it as of yet. But people can also self-inoculate with warts and spread their wart from one area to another on their own body. So I do not recommend picking at the wart. I usually tell people do not touch it. And if you're going to apply medicine, use a Q-tip or a glove. I will also often see them on the legs or the face in an area where somebody has been shaving and they are spreading it around with the razor and the trauma to the skin. So if that's the case, I obviously tell patients to throw away the razor and potentially try to stop shaving for a while while we are waiting for the infection to go away. So warts are a virus that the body is not recognizing as foreign and the body is allowing it to be on the skin and live there. And part of what we are trying to do with treatment in addition to destroying the wart, is to get the body to fight off the virus with its own immune system and get rid of the entire infection. So let's accept the fact that there's a wart somewhere on the body, it's annoying and ugly, and the patient wants it gone. And let's divide the discussion into warts on different parts of the body. Let's do hands and feet, general limbs and trunk, face, and general area. So for the hands and feet, Warts are very annoying as people are embarrassed by them on the hands, people can see them, and on the feet, sometimes it can hurt when you walk. It feels like you're walking on a pebble. So I will typically start on the hands and feet by telling the patient to buy a pumice stone, which you can get online or in a pharmacy, and use it in the shower only on the warts because you do not want to spread the virus around to other areas, but pumice them at the very end of the shower when the skin is nice and moist to try to get rid of some of the dead skin on the surface of the wart. I will then recommend that patients find over-the-counter salicylic acid products. It's pretty easy to find 17 to 20% salicylic acid as a wart or corn remover in the foot section of the drugstore, but there are also up to 40% over-the-counter, which is stronger. Sometimes it comes on a Band-Aid or in a sheet that you have to cut a little piece of. Anything is fine. The stronger, the better if you can tolerate it. And I have them put that on at night, either the medicine or the little Band-Aid. And I usually recommend removing it in the morning and leaving it alone. 
and this will often irritate the wart and get rid of it just with home use of a pumice stone and over-the-counter wart remover. Some of these patients will want to, or I will recommend that they also come in for cryotherapy, which is a freezing treatment done in the office. The -the over-the-counter version of this is useless. I don't know why it exists, but the in-office treatment is very helpful. It's another way of trying to induce an immune response and destroy the skin that is harboring the wart there. If someone is coming in for in-office cryotherapy treatments, I will often give them a week off of their home program afterwards because the skin is then irritated, and they will come in once every couple of months for a treatment, and they will work on it at home, and oftentimes this induces an immune response and all the warts disappear within a couple of months. Sometimes it does take longer. I've seen this take a year, even longer than that on rare occasions, but this is sort of baseline therapy. There are other options. One of the popular options is something called candida antigen injection. Candida is yeast, and we all have been exposed to it, and almost all of us have antibodies to it. So if you inject candida antigen, which is used for allergy testing, into the wart area, you can basically get your body to fight off the candida antigen, and then because the wart is sitting there, it will also be fighting off the wart virus. It's like a trick for the immune system. So this often works really well, but it can be painful, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But this is another effective treatment for an in-office with a dermatologist. Other options would include injecting chemotherapy agents or trying to destroy the wart by cutting it off and burning it. Cutting it off does not really work well on the hands and feet, typically. It can cause scarring. It's hard to cut out a virus. In fact, it's pretty much impossible to completely cut out a virus. So then it ends up growing back. So I typically won't cut it out on the hands and the feet, but we will do that for other body parts. People will often ask about laser treatment for warts. Many lasers have been tried. They are just not consistent. There is a new heat therapy. Let's see how that works. There's also the home remedy of putting duct tape over the warts and just leaving it on for as long as possible, up to a week or so, and trying to macerate and irritate the warts underneath the duct tape. I haven't seen it be particularly effective. Honestly, there's lots of different home remedies for warts. I don't typically recommend it, but sometimes it can be helpful for occasional patients. But the typical treatment that I do for the hands and the feet will be home therapy with the pumice stone, over-the-counter wart remover of whatever variety they can find, and in-office cryotherapy or candida antigen injection treatments. Let's move on to warts on the body. Sometimes people have a wart on the arm or on the leg, just a random wart in a random place. If there's one wart, I will often cut that off if it's on skin that is amenable, so not really the hands and the feet. But on the body, if there's one wart, sometimes I'll just clean it, numb it, cut it off, curette it, so try to scrape the bottom, make sure we've gotten all of it, and then burn it to try to prevent it from coming back. The upside of this treatment is that it's all gone. Great, wart is gone. Downside is it definitely leaves a permanent scar, and because the wart is a virus, on occasion it will still grow back despite the fact that we cut it off. But It usually does work well if somebody has a solitary wart in an area where that is amenable to just cutting it off. We will just cut it. Now let's talk about the face. Warts on the face, if it's just one solitary wart, again, I will often just cut it off. It depends on the patient's skin and what they want done and where it is. It will leave a little tiny scar, but sometimes that's the best option. But on the face, sometimes there are multiple warts. Either someone spread it by shaving or they have a condition called flat warts and it's all over their face. And for that, I will often use a retinoid cream, so over-the-counter Differin or prescription Retin-A and prescription Amiquimod to try to get the warts to thin out a bit and then induce an immune response and have the body fight them off. And this typically works really well and is really quite effective. And on occasion on the face, we can still do light cryotherapy, just freeze them a little bit, or I will also often burn them or do cautery. 
Cryotherapy and cautery can theoretically leave scarring, but when they're done in the hands of a really talented board-certified dermatologist and the patient is not in the sun, it often can work really well and not leave scars. I will often do a test area when we're working on the face to make sure that there is no scarring from the first few that we do and then go ahead and do larger numbers of them. Now let's move on to genital warts. This is really a whole topic in and of itself, but I just want to tackle the basics. Genital warts need partner notification and testing, and in a female, a pap smear to make sure, and a GYN exam to make sure that they are not inside, sometimes also a rectal exam. So this requires multidisciplinary coordination of care between a dermatologist and a GYN and an internist. And that sometimes gets complicated, but I'd also like to mention that there is a vaccine that is very effective for preventing genital warts, and that is something to ask your pediatrician or your primary care doctor or your GYN. It's really a great vaccine. But once the warts are present, they can be treated. They can be biopsied and tested to prove that it's a wart and also type the HPV to see what type of HPV is there. If it's a high-risk strain that is prone to causing cancer or a low-risk strain, so occasionally we will do a biopsy. But in terms of removing the warts, we usually will use a miquimod cream, which works well in the genital region. We will often use different acids. We will do cryotherapy. Sometimes we will burn them off. There are some in-office applications. There are some things for home use. This is really all for a personal discussion with your doctor to figure out what works best for you. It's a very sensitive area. There are a lot of different options. General warts are really quite annoying, but they are treatable. So in summary, warts are caused by HPV or human papillomavirus. HPV has different strains that affect different parts of the body. There is a vaccine to help prevent genital warts, but once the warts are present in any body part, There are lots of choices of treatment, including at-home treatments, prescriptions, in-office treatments, and removals. So if you think you have warts, definitely see your board-certified dermatologist to discuss and figure out if that is the correct diagnosis, and if so, what are the best options to get rid of it. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Dr. Rebecca Bax podcast. I'm Dr. Rebecca Bax, board-certified dermatologist. I hope this episode was informative and that you enjoyed listening. If you found this podcast useful, please give us a five-star rating wherever you get your podcasts. It helps others find us so we can help them too. Just a caveat to remember, this is not medical advice, and please see your dermatologist or doctor for questions pertaining to your specific situation. I look forward to talking with you again in the next episode.